everybody and welcome back to PC Building Simulator. Um, we're going to do something a little bit different this episode. You can notice I have a third bench and a um, cabinet and that's because we're in the free build section. So this is not the main game and what I thought it might be good fun to do today is to actually build my PC, the PC I currently am using or at least as close an approximation as I can get. Because while the game does have a lot of parts, it doesn't have every part uh, that we have. So, um, yeah, I thought that might be quite good fun. One of the reasons why I'm not doing the normal, like, regular game um, career mode, shall we say, is because um, I want to take a little bit of a break from PC Building Sim. There's a lot of updates coming down the line, and um, I thought... It might be way sorry, it might be best to wait and let those updates come in. Such things as overclocking, more parts, um, you know, just really interesting cool stuff and like updated missions, shall we say, or quests, whatever you want to call them, jobs, um, to do. And uh yeah, so I think this will be the last episode for a few weeks anyway. Um, but we will definitely come back to it because I enjoy the game and it's actually surprisingly popular. Now in the free build you have access to all the parts you could want, so um, we have got all the cases that you can possibly get in the game, uh, that's a nice case actually, the RL07 Silverstone, um, they're actually all pretty nice cases to be fair, um, but the case I actually own is an NCXT, oh I love these Hyper Beast ones as well, they're cool, um, oh that is a really nice case. Um, the one I actually have is an S340 Elite, um, which looks, uh, they've only got the white variation for the S340, which is the non-elite. The elite they don't have um, in um, uh, white, which I have in. I have it with white with uh, black, the way the blue there is, it's black, um, and it's nice. So I'm going to pick the black and red because I'd probably choose that one if I couldn't have the white um, on there. It's a nice case. You've got this power supply shroud here which hides your power supply. Um, you've got some space here to show off SSDs um, if you wish. This kind of like bar here, um, uh, that will, um, oh that's a bit of view actually. Um, let's take off the, so this is a full tempered glass. Uh, so side panel. It's quite scary to actually take off in real life and doing those thumb screws because obviously if you smash it or anything then you've got a bit of a problem. Um, this uh, bar here hides cables um, quite nicely. Um, you have with the case when you buy it, the case generally costs around about, I think I got it for about £65. It's generally around that mark of 65 to 70 depending on whether or not you can get a good deal on it or not. I think I did okay, but it was the case I really wanted, so, um, you know, I obviously didn't really wait around for a deal. Um, I, I think when it comes to a case, um, my suggestion when building a PC is to think about two things with a case. One is airflow, the other is cable management. So, airflow being how well will air um, come into the case and then come out the case. So, in the case of the S340, uh, it has two fans which come with it. Uh, these two here, I'm actually going to remove them because we're going to replace them with, I guess, different fans. Um, but these two fans, they... Um, will be set to exhaust, so they will suck out hot air, well, hopefully hot air anyway, uh, which is why they're put towards the back, because um, you would generally, I guess, put um, some fans at the front here, which would blow cool air in, or at least air from the outside in. Um, that will help to keep the components inside cool, and then that will suck out the hot air, which is, you know, the air turns hot from these components, so you kind of suck it out, essentially, and you're constantly putting in cooler air and sucking out the hot air, you know, just, it's, it's, it's kind of basic stuff. Now, the case actually only comes with those two fans, so you kind of have an option. You can either just let it suck out the warm air, which, if you're having a relatively, um, not underpowered, but a relatively um, less powerful version 
so if you're running say like up to maybe like a 1070 um you know and a, and a kind of standard i5 you know something or other then you'd probably get away with that without having a problem if you're running something a bit beefier you know generally the more powerful something is the more heat it produces it's not always the case um but generally in a way that that is how it works so you might want to invest in a couple of fans at the front here now the two fans you saw there are what are called 120 millimeter fans um so that's the size of them generally pc case fans come in two sizes 120 mil and 140 mil um these would only hold 120 like that's how they're kind of set out uh these front ones could hold 120 or 140 so they could hold the the bigger ones the advantage of 140 over 120 is the volume of air which they can pass through which is why you'll generally see them at the front of a case um but also um you will um they can also be quieter because they are larger they can go at a lower rpm so revolution per minute um and as such uh they can push through the same amount of air but at a lower speed so they can be a little bit quieter so then they are a bit more expensive not usually a lot maybe five to ten pounds per fan more expensive so it, it's an option people have like i wouldn't say one or the other is better it's kind of what usage you want now in my case i have two 140 mil fans here and i have 120 mil fans here and here so the idea is that it sucks in air here blows it out the one slight issue with the um s340 is the airflow so the airflow comes in from the top here and from the bottom there um you know rather than from the actual front of the pc um as some pcs can now the advantage i guess is that a it kind of looks nice because <laughs> you've got a um you know just a nice clean panel at the front um but i guess the potential disadvantage is that you know your fans might get a little bit starved for air now the way I went about solving that issue was to get um, static pressure fans. And so fans come in two different styles, airflow and static pressure. Generally, the rule of thumb is that if you have a more enclosed um, area that you want to suck air into, you would go for um, static pressure because they're better at sucking air in. Um, and if you had, like, say, an open front, so if this was off, for example, and you had it nice and open, you would go for airflow because it's not going to have to suck as much air in. It's just going to push the air through. And um, so if the front was open, I'd probably go with um, uh, static. Uh, sorry, I'd probably go with airflow fans. But because, obviously, you have the front cover on, I went with static pressure. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not going to make a huge difference, okay? We're not talking about, um, you know dropping your case temperatures by like 10 degrees or anything like that you might find it drops it by a couple of degrees here or there maybe not even that depending on your circumstances every um everybody has a different kind of ambient temperature or a different position they keep their pc different components in their pcs and all of these things will you know have a different kind of style different cases will you know have optimal fan layouts um you know, so it's totally someone's option as to what they uh, want to have in the, um, yeah, we also have these, it's quite a nice removable dust filter on the front, um, which obviously ideally stops dust from um, coming into your PC, doesn't effectively, um, you know, stop all dust, but, you know, it, it does a better job than nothing these don't have dust filters this one in here because the idea is that they push air out so if they're running and pushing air out then you're going to struggle to have dust go in there um, on a lot of other pcs cases they will have dust filters over every fan because if you want it to run uh, a system where you sucked in from the back and top and pushed out through the front you could do that but obviously this is not set up and designed in that way um, so as i was saying earlier it has um actually let's take this back case off as well 
these are thumb screws so you can easily undo them with your thumb um, or fingers um, it has some nice like little clips on the back as well which work for uh, cable management um, I think you can also mount SSDs on the back here as well I believe I have three SSDs so I use all these ports but um, you obviously don't have to you can actually even put like a different thing like a, um, a, a fan controller or a, a RGB controller or something in there that'll work as well um, yeah and as I said it's got this nice bar here which uh, helps with cable management and stuff like that uh, you have your cables here for the front IO front IO here being um, a headphone jack a microphone port a HDMI at the front um, the way the HDMI works is it will run from there and then you can run it all the way to the back um, there's like an extra uh, a cable here um, like a hole here where it runs through and plugs into your graphics card the idea being that if you're using a VR headset um, you can plug it easily into the front of your PC those who have VR headsets you might know that it's actually quite a pain in the arse on like other case designs where you have to plug it into the back of your PC because you either have to turn your PC round to get a good enough length of cable or um, you know you potentially run the risk of like you know yanking your PC about and such like so such a really nice design um, on there it's got like um, two USB 2.0s and two USB 3.0s these are the, the threes that USB 3.0 is usually quite easily um, recognized by the little uh, like connector inside being blue so it uh, doesn't really show up here but if you imagine that little bit inside is blue that's a good way to tell it's a USB 3.0 um, it would just be the usual silver or whatever color the port is for a 2.0 and you have a power button as well there we have um, some drive bays under here which are used for well you can use them for SSDs to be fair they're also used for uh, mechanical uh, hard drives as well which are obviously slightly larger um, and you have the power supply uh, which goes in there and so is covered by this kind of side port as well uh, so it's a nice case I think um, I, I just really liked it from day one potentially you could argue there might be some cases out there nowadays which are a little bit better this is actually a fairly old um, like a design case I think NZXD have just released their new ones which are the uh, um, H500 I believe and uh, they look really nice as well um, so they're probably going to uh, like you know this case I think will always be a good seller but it will probably be replaced by the H500 it seems to get some pretty decent reviews um, the standard S340 um, I believe just has a like um, doesn't have tempered glass like all of it tempered glass it has like a window on it um, and it doesn't I don't think it quite looks as nice as the S340 Elite when it's done so yeah it, it, it does cost the S340 Elite does cost about 20 quid more I think than the S340 regular edition so it's you know it's up to you what you kind of want to get I think it's a good idea if you're building a PC and thinking about it to you know even if you're on a budget to try to spend as much as you can on a case because um, essentially uh, that case could do you through some upgrades so if you buy a case which perhaps doesn't have as many hard drive mounts or um, you know doesn't allow the space to fit in you know a big enough graphics card or you know doesn't have enough space for fans and things like that then in the future when you're looking to upgrade you might not be able to fit it in your case and you might have to um, you know buy a new case as well um, which could be fiddly um, the other thing you've got to think about on this is it's not the widest case in the world it's not bad but it's not the widest and um, uh, certain uh, air coolers would not uh, fit in this case so you always have to check the dimensions bcpartpicker.com is a great um, like utility to use which will you know tell, tell you about things like that not being compatible 
because of you know sizes and dimensions and things like that but I will also say that I was building a PC for my uh, girlfriend recently and uh, the case manufacturer said that the power supply the um, largest power supply it could take was 160 millimeters um, that was the official um, size but um, so lengthwise 160 millimeters 16 centimeters but I actually read a review and they said that they could fit a power supply up to uh, 200 millimeters or 20 centimeters in size and I actually got one which was 165 and obviously like PC power picker would flag that and say oh you know issue here but um, uh, it fitted absolutely fine you know five millimeters not going to make a problem not going to be too much of an issue it, it was obviously just to be on the safe side the manufacturer had that dimensions because you would need to fit in the um, power supply and then the cables coming out but it was not a problem so you can bear that in mind sometimes you can take things like that with a pinch of salt sometimes you just can't um, so that's the case I guess motherboard wise um, it doesn't have the motherboard I actually have which is a Z170 Asus uh, gaming Strix or something like that um, it only has Z270s here so we're just going to pop in I think the um, yeah, gaming carbon pro. It's, I've got an Asus motherboard. Now motherboards, uh, I think I've spoken about before. Where uh, I recommend, if you're building a PC, you would need to spend between 100 to 150 pounds on a motherboard. But it's not really worth spending any more than that unless you're building a very, very, very high-end PC, um, or you just have the cash to spend. Um, but it is important to have a look at the, your needs um, when you are uh, to have a look at your needs when you are choosing your motherboard. So um, motherboards will have like options like M.2 drive bays, um, a certain number of SATA um, cables. M.2 is a new type of storage. I say new; it's been around for a few years, but it's probably a bit more mainstream and price wise it's come down quite a lot recently um, it's essentially like an SSD but it's a tiny little thing uh, about the size of a flash drive really um, and in some cases it is faster than SSDs but not by that much that it would really make a big difference for you uh, but they are pretty similar prices now so it can be something which you could uh, choose to get um, and uh, generally, most motherboards will have four RAM slots. They'll generally have PCIe Express lanes, three of them in this size, which is, I think is an S80X. Um, you get like an M80X, which would generally be cut off, shall we say like here. So it would have one PCIe slot. PCIe slots hold um, things like graphics cards. In my case, I've got a capture card in one as well. Uh, you could have a Wi-Fi card in there as well if you wanted to run uh, Wi-Fi. Um, yeah, so uh, there's lots of choices there, basically. Um, these things are like heat shields here, so they kind of keep things cool um, as well. You've got your like audio driver, and then all these pins down here can look really, really complicated. But the chances are you won't actually use all of them. <laughs> um, and uh, it's really simple. Um, kind of what goes where and, and how it works and stuff like that it does vary um, motherboard to motherboard for example this port here works um, you that plugs in your USB uh, 3.0 from to your front there would plug into it now on my motherboard it's down here maybe that's an Asus thing maybe that's an MSI thing um, but you know once you the, the fantastic thing about computer parts nowadays is they're all kind of standardized so that and that size is exactly the same across all motherboards you know your your main power um, supply here for the motherboard is um, you know the same size 24 pin as on every motherboard same fitting with every power supply and it just makes things so much easier because you don't have to potentially worry about having different size ports or anything like that everything will just work you know you have that as I said is your motherboard power that is your CPU power up here uh, 8 pin there which go from your power supply now uh, your 
nice to have your what's called IO here. Um, so this one looks like it's got what um, four USBs, HDMI, which um, the thing about this HDMI is you can run your PC just from that into, into your monitor. But obviously if you have a graphics card, it won't use the graphics card. It will use the integrated graphics from your CPU here, which you probably don't want to do unless you just happen to not have a graphics card because you're not planning to game or anything, in which case you just run it from there. This one's got a DVI port as well, which is another type of port. Uh, looks like a couple more um, USBs. Um, that looks like a really old style, um, like mouse connector, uh, ethernet port. This is your audio, um, optical digital output there. But yeah, uh, and then you have your um, CPU shield, as it were, delayed, put your CPU in. Uh, really, I think the CPU is um, the potentially the most fiddly thing to put into your uh, PC. It's not very difficult to put in, um, as long as you get the right way around. It'll have a little triangle, do you see a little triangle on the edge of it there? That always goes down to the bottom left, um, or should do anyway. Um, I don't think many motherboards have a different layout. And that might only be for Intel, by the way. Um, AMD could have a different thing, but i be honest, I've never um, made a PC using AMD. Um, then once you put it in, you would simply um, like close the shield as much as it will close, and then push down this retention arm here. You might be like scared at that point, because you have to apply quite a lot of pressure to get this arm down and push it under there. But as long as your CPU is you know, the right way around and it's nicely in, you won't do any damage to it whatsoever. Um, you know, as long as you just push it down and it slots underneath this latch here and then that's your CPU in. Um, you, know, you can't go wrong with it from there, basically. As I said, you just gotta make sure it's the right way around. Obviously, we want to use some thermal paste, and uh, we'll put in our CPU cooling next. So, I would love to have a Kraken <laughs> X62 uh, or something like that. That would be awesome. Uh, I don't, however. Um, and to be honest with you, uh, they're very good, but it's, it would kind of be overkill because I don't really overclock. Um, I think I said, by the way, I have a 6600K. Um, the i7 6600K, which is not the top of the line by any means. They only go up to 7700 by the looks here, but there is like 8700 and 8900 I think as well, which is like the real like hardcore thing. And if you had like AMD, um, do they have like 80? Yeah, they've got the 8700s. That's as far as it goes though by the looks of it. Uh, you got your AMD, they even have up to like the Thread Ripper, which is a cool name, and it's flipping huge, um, and it's very, very powerful. You can see here the cores. Um, so, uh, cores, how can I describe cores? Cores are, um, I, I guess like your computing channels, you know, generally the more cores, the more work your CPU can do because it can work on multiple different channels okay however if you're gaming um, the reality is you probably wouldn't need more than four um, because gaming doesn't generally use the CPU as much as it uses a graphics card so um, a four core CPU is completely adequate for gaming if you are big into graphic design video editing the more cores the better Generally, AMD are known as having more cores than Intel, but Intel are kind of known to be a bit better for gaming. It's all subjective. Um, and, you know, whatever your use case scenario is, if you do like a bit of gaming and a bit of video editing or photo editing or, you know, any sort of work like that, graphic design work, you'd probably be better off getting an AMD. If you're purely just going for gaming, you might be better off with Intel, but then again, AMD is usually a bit cheaper, a bit more um, bang for your buck, as it were. You then have other things to take into account, such as what 
voltage, so in other words, how much power it draws. Uh, you have uh, the frequency, so you can generally see like a Intel Core frequency will be a bit higher, um, so it runs a bit faster than usually than an AMD, um, which is why it's known, I think, as a little bit better for gaming, but it's kind of optional, it doesn't really work like that. Um, and uh, when you have a K next to it on an Intel processor, or an X next to it on a, on a Ryzen processor, that means you can overclock it. Overclock it means you are increasing the frequency. Um, sometimes you can increase the frequency, for example, on like a i5 or an i7 um, to around 5 megahertz or 5,000 megahertz, 5 gigahertz. Um, which will give you better performance in gaming without a doubt, maybe not a huge number, like you're not going to suddenly go from 30 frames to 60 frames or anything like that, but it'll certainly give you a few bits more and people like doing it. Um, the downside to overclocking is that it generally will shorten the lifespan of your component because you are running it. Um, it, it imagine you're driving a car and you drive that car fast all the time, okay? The engine is having to work a lot harder than if you just kind of poodled around town in it. So you could do 5,000 miles in a car and you drove it real hard, you know? Like, um, you know, you got, you, you had your foot on the floor the whole time and that car, you know, you could be like, yeah, my car's really fast, but it ain't gonna last as long as if you, like, don't drive as fast in your car and, you know, just drive along without, you know, the revs going into the red or anything like that. So that's the way I would think about it. Of course, if you're, you know, it, how long it shortens the life is massively up for debate. It, every single, the problem is every component will overclock differently, different amounts and, you know, could go a lot sooner than another one. So it's, it's impossible to tell. Some people will tell you of, you know, overclocking their CPU and never having a problem. You know, until you know years later when they they will replace it with a, just a newer model. Some people will tell you about overclocking it and literally destroying it in a you know a matter of months. So it's really kind of up in the air. A um, thing I would say where overclocking is most useful is towards the end of the lifespan of your CPU to just try and get a little bit extra out of it um, rather than buying one and then overclocking it immediately because if you're buying a new CPU, which say is close to or top of the line, you don't need to overclock it at that point. Um, it's, I think overclocking comes more towards the end of its lifespan when it might be like three generations behind the current one and you just need to get a bit more oomph out of it to uh, help you out. But that's my opinion, you know, you can do what you want. Uh, I generally don't overclock um, my components. Um, especially my CPU, you, ju you just don't need to on an i7-6700. It, it isn't going to slow down my performance, maybe by five frames per second. I'm not gonna cry about that, compared to like, a, you know, an i7-7700 or, uh, or 8700K. So, yeah, that's kind of my opinion on that one. Um, yeah. And uh, the cooling of it, I have a Cooler Master uh, Hyper 212 Evo, which is like the best selling cooler you can get. It's incredibly box standard, um, but it absolutely 100% does the job. Um, it, it does a good job. I actually replaced the fan on it from the Cooler Master's fan to a more expensive, quieter fan. Um, and the thing you have to think about with cooling is you have two choices. You can go air cooling, which is one of these, which has a radiator, a fan, that cools some heat pipes. These like copper pipes which are underneath it, we can't really see it that well. And uh, that cools your CPU. And then you have water cooling, which uh, runs a uh, liquid through these pipes over the, uh, the plate there, which cools the um, CPU and then the way the liquid is kept cool is by a radiator and a fan, like away from the CPU. Both have their pros and cons. Um, water cooling is generally a bit more expensive than just a, a kind of bog standard air cooler, so it would be um, 
my Hyper 212 is about 30 quid. The cheapest decent, like, um, single, like, something like this would be about 40 quid. Something like that would be a little bit more expensive. The real high-end ones with the LEDs would be, like, 100 to 150 pounds for the water cooling. And a real high-end air cooler, like a Noctua, um, NH15 or, um, a Dark Rock Pro by, um, uh, be quiet, I think it is, yeah, they, they would probably cost, um, 60 to 70 pounds, probably, so, um, it's whatever you prefer, some people will say that water cooling is quieter, um, and better, some people wouldn't, <laughs> like, it's really, really objective, um, my personal opinion is that something like a Kraken X62 looks fantastic in your build, um, but also there's something really charming about a really nice um, like CPU cooler and they don't have a very good range here but you can get things which have got like LED fans and such um, in them and, and you know they can look really nice too and you know you can go for ones which have got LEDs and all that kind of stuff but I've got a very bog standard one if you aren't um, you can actually turn this as well I could have it any angle I wanted uh, I don't I want it straight on like that though um, so that's kind of the way it looks the way this works is it brings in cool air that cools the radiator as I said which cools the heat pipes which in turn cools your um, uh, CPU it's pretty simple really hot air will come out through the back and that's where your case fan would then suck it out so it doesn't you know bring up the ambient temperature in there um, it doesn't look bad, I don't think, like, the 212, this looks very similar, the fan's a bit different, but otherwise it looks pretty similar, um, as to what you've got, what, what missing, oh, we, we obviously have some missing parts, I guess, um, and then we would, uh, cable it as well, it's connected to the motherboard, that connects the fan up, you have a dedicated, um, like, uh, fan, um, like point to plug it in which will say CPU and that will allow the PC to monitor how hot your CPU is getting and in turn up the RPM of your fan or bring it down obviously the more the higher the RPM the louder your fan's going to be the lower the quieter and the more you know power you're going to use at the higher so you're not just going to run it high all the time um, but yeah that'll allow it to control that so yeah, that's kind of what I've got so far. Uh, in terms of the next step, I guess, memory. I have uh, two 8 gigabyte sticks by um, HyperX. Now, I don't think they have HyperX here. They don't, so I'll get something which looks as similar as I can. The sticks I've got are just completely black. Um, these ones are kind of like, and I've actually got 26, um, 66 uh, hertz frequency, I don't know if we have that here, we do actually, we have some Corsair Dominator ones, uh, do we have any of this team group stuff which is 26, I'd rather get ones which if they don't look that similar, uh, at least have the same frequency, they've got red ones there, as I said my ones are black, those ones are white. They must have some if they got them in white. <laughs> Apparently not. Uh, okay, let's put the Corsair Dominator in. It's not really technically. Uh, that's technically better, but uh, um, so I've got two sticks of eight gigabyte. So we'll just. Uh, up. If you're wondering like how I know this stuff about computers, I know this stuff because I watched um, uh, videos on YouTube, that's it, like there wasn't somebody who stood there and I taught all this to me, I simply went on YouTube and I watched uh, some videos and I learned and I read about it, that's it. Like every bit of information you need to build a PC is on the internet in very very good uh, easy to um, 
like watch or read articles so that's why I think it's, it's pretty easy to build your own PC so um, yeah my, my RAM doesn't quite look like that but essentially it is that RAM 16 gigabytes um, if you were just planning on building a the problem with RAM at the minute is it's quite expensive there is kind of rumors that that's due to price fixing by um, uh, you know the companies to keep the price high there's investigation going into that but also the um, actual components for them are having a bit of a shortage at the minute the, the metals that go into making it so the price of them has gone up um, I usually use this anecdote but when I brought my RAM for my PC about two years ago um, it cost me for the 16 gigabytes it cost me about 90 pounds nowadays it would cost me about 150 pounds for the same two so whereas you would expect the price of things to go down because um, you know it's got older it's actually massively gone up um, because of the uh, uh, various factors and so RAM's expensive um, 16 gigabytes I'd say is the maximum you need if you're gaming uh, anything more than that when you're gaming is a waste really but if you were doing again video editing photo editing um, graphic design you know 32 is a good amount to have but it's expensive uh, 8 gigabytes for gaming is perfectly fine unless you are running a very very high-end system um, you know because it could get a bit lost but there are games coming out which will utilize more than 8 gigabytes of RAM so bear that in mind um, you are unlikely I'd say within the next two years or so if you only had eight you should be looking to upgrade but you don't have to just yet really without you wouldn't really have to face many consequences if you didn't um, RAM is very very fiddly you have to have the same RAM in there so if I wanted to upgrade to 32 I'd have to get the same RAM otherwise it would not work um, exactly the same I'm not just talking about the same clock speed exactly the same um, graphics cards work slightly differently but I'll come into that a bit later so that's essentially that right now um, now none of this will work without having a power supply um, I have a Corsair um, 750 I saw the Corsair one there I'm just running I have a HX 750i but I don't believe they have that here so we're going to go for the 750TM uh, and install that the um, the thing to look for in a power supply is they have ratings okay so um, oh, we have to take the back off here uh, you'll see them they have like um, ratings like gold silver bronze platinum platinum being the best then gold then silver then bronze um, anything less than a bronze don't bother getting a power supply is vital it's vital you get a good one because if you don't get a good one you could blow every single component in your machine if you cheap out at this stage um, you know it's a problem potentially in the future obviously if you're on a really tight budget you're on a really tight budget it's totally understandable um, but you know I would advise people to look at what power supply they're getting you don't necessarily with modern day if you're using the 10 series of graphics cards the Nvidia ones you don't need like a 750 power supply is overkill for me the reason why I have a 750 watt power supply is because I used to run two 970s in SLI so I used to have two graphics cards which are the thing which really eat your uh, power and the 9 series of graphics cards the 970 80 980 Ti they do eat power way more than the 10 series which I've got a 1080 Ti now um, which is much better uh, so I potentially would only need maybe a 500 watt power supply to actually run everything comfortably especially if I'm not overclocking but it's just because I had that power supply before um, that's why I have it and I think that power supply cost me about a hundred pounds um, in total as I said it's best not to cheap out you can get good deals uh, when I was um, building my girlfriend's computer I got a 650 watt EVGA uh, gold um, rated power supply for uh, 50 pounds and it was um, semi modular so this is the other thing that comes uh, or is to think about with power supplies is they either come um, completely wired semi modular or completely modular uh, 
modular. Oh, this power supply is semi-modular. What that means is it has cables which are already connected inside which you cannot remove. They would typically be your graphics card cable, your 24-pin uh, motherboard and your um, CPU cable. They'd be labelled as such. Your 8-pin CPU. Um, because pretty much every build would need those cables, right? And then they'll have um, specific ones which you can choose to plug in, whether it's for uh, SATA drives like SSDs or HDs, hard disk drives like another potential graphics card if you're running SLI, um, or anything else you were running that might need a power cable going to it. Um, fully modular, everything is connected like that. And um, I can't remember what the name of it is when it's not fully modular. Um, annoying is the name for it. Um, but that would just have all the, the cables there. The good thing about having a fully modular power supply is that you only have the cables you need. So cable management wise is a lot easier. Um, you can also replace those cables with uh, like fancier cables, either you know nicely coloured ones or stuff like that. Um, which you can potentially do with these cables anyway by getting an extender. But the problem with having a, a non-modular power supply is that um, all these cables, if you do not use them, are going to sit there and they can look a bit untidy and such like. Depends on how clean a build you want. As I said, uh, it's a bit easier to build with a fully modular one, um, but it's obviously, you know, budget and stuff like that will affect it. So, um, yeah, that's my power supply that I've got. Let's just... Um, we screwed in, we have screwed it in, okay, good. Uh, in there, okay. Um, next up is, uh, let's put in our storage, I guess. So I've got a, a two gigabyte um, Seagate uh, SSD, um, hard disk drive, which I would pop in there. And I've got three SSDs. Now, I, I see they don't have, like, different makes of SSDs. Uh, I actually have a 500 gigabyte one. I'll put a, a 250 and a... So I've got a two, I've got a 250, a 500, and a uh, 120. Uh, the 120 is a um, Samsung Pro 850 Evo, which is a very, very fast one. I use that for all the big games I have. Uh, the 500 uh, gigabyte uh, one I use for just my standard games, and the 250 one I use for Windows, um, which is just an Intel one. Um, SSDs are a big, big um, important component, and they're so, so cheap nowadays that you would be mad not to have one in your system, basically. Even if you're running a laptop, okay, you can put an SSD in there. It's very easy to install, and you will notice a massive difference in the speed of running your programs um, when using a mechanical hard drive it is as the name suggests mechanical there are parts which are moving and um, as such it's only a certain speed you can go in it also it's a bit noisier too you know that noise a mechanical hard drive makes a grrr, 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 grrr. Um, an SSD doesn't have mechanical parts into it it's like a flash drive basically um, and um, as such uh, it's much, much faster. Um, they have different speeds uh, as opposed to ones, but even if you get a pretty box standard one, it's a vast improvement over a hard disk drive, so it's very highly recommended um, by me. Um, yeah, <laughs> so um, that's kind of uh, what we have so far. Um, what else do we want to install? I guess we can install case fans. Yep. Let me see what they've got that match mine. Okay, they don't really have anything that matches mine. Um, just for the fanciness of it, because they don't really have anything that match mine. Let's put in some of these fancy, these like RGB ones. There we go. So these would be on exhaust. I see we don't get to have a choice of which way round it goes. Um, the, 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 the way to remember which way around a fan goes essentially is this bit with this kind of like here yeah, that's always the back and the front is usually where the logo is uh, on it it's just an easy way to kind of remember that I guess this case would look this 
this would look much better if this case was white, but again, they don't have that choice at the minute. Uh, do they have like, they have 120, so let's put some 140s in the front. Why won't it let me um, install this? Okay, yeah, I know case fans move, but I'm just wondering why. Uh, do I have to, uh, I might have to remove th this to install it. Oh, okay, it did. That's a bit, I guess it makes sense, you do have to do that, but that's a bit fiddly. Uh, to be honest. So again, my PC doesn't quite look like this, but, you know, for all intents and purposes, it has two 140s here. Um, they're just kind of book standard NCXT fans. I'd love to get like some LED fans and make it all look fancy, but it's just not a priority. Like LEDs look great and everything. And I do have LED lighting in my um, PC from my um, graphics card and from my uh, motherboard, which does light up, but, um, but it's just not an essential thing nowadays. Uh, what do we need to cable up? Uh, so you need to cable all the fans up. Um, are you joking me? It's only got like one. <laughs> only got one. Can we get in a fan? Oh wow, we actually got braided cables. Oh hello. Boy oh boy, we can have some fun. Um, I haven't got those either, but we might need to put a slightly better um, motherboard in here, which is slightly annoying because... Uh, we'd have to take everything apart, but for some reason it seems to only have like one fan port, which is really weird. Uh, we don't have an option for like um, fan controllers by the looks of it. but they're not quite 
quite as good as the uh, um, Intel ones. So I've got a 1080 Ti. I've got a gigabyte, but it's not an Aorus. Um, but I think that's like the closest we're going to get um, to one. So I won't put the extreme in. Um, so to explain about graphics card, um, the important thing about a graphics card is a graphics card are what runs games effectively. Um, the more powerful the graphics card, the more frames per second you're going to get, the better resolution you can be able to get at those frames per second. Um, essentially, it will have the biggest impact on a game out of anything that you put in your PC. It's also the most expensive component. More expensive than a CPU, more expensive than anything else. Um, especially when you get into the high end stuff. Um, if you were running a, if you just wanted to run uh, everything at high at 1080p, so in other words, you know, your normal HD, you couldn't go wrong with something like a um, uh, an NVIDIA 1060. Uh, something like this. 6 gigabytes of VRAM. Do you plenty? That'll last you good for years if you were just going at. Um, you have a six and three gigabyte choice, by the way. I'd always go for the six. This would typically cost you about two hundred pounds, I think, now for a ten sixty. Uh, let me just check that. Um, uh, ten sixty six gigabyte. Actually, it's more looking more like three hundred quid at the minute. To be fair, they're still they're still quite expensive. Um, Potentially you could go to a, a 1050, you'd have to turn down some of the settings probably, but you would, it would still look better than a um, uh, Xbox or PlayStation. Um, a 1050 Ti would set you back about 150, you can get one for, that's pretty good. Uh, it's got 4 gigabytes of RAM, 1050 Ti would... Yeah, you'd have to probably have it between high and medium on settings. But if you've got the four gigabyte um, Ti, don't get the two, the, that one. To be fair, it's probably not worth it. Um, then you have the ten six. So we have the ten sixty. Then we have the ten seventy. So these are the latest generation of them. You do get a nine series, but you can't really buy them brand new anymore. Um, we have a ten seventy Ti and a ten seventy. The, the TI versions are always a faster version, usually a more powerful version um, of whatever number they are. The thing to look out for on uh, GPUs are that they have uh, VRAM, which the higher the number the better, and they have a core frequency, um, the higher the number the better. So like your uh, CPU, they run at a frequency. The higher the frequency, the essentially more you're going to get out of it. But it, it does kind of vary a little bit. Um, you also have to think about the cooling. So you can see on some of these, like MSI, they have their own particular like style of cooler on it, as does Gigabyte. Um, and then you have this kind of like what looks more like a Founders Edition with a, a kind of blower cooler there. Um, it, it, it varies on like what you can afford, but generally, like the higher end cards of a certain series are going to be uh, a lot better. Um, and then we get to the 1080s, which are the more kind of flagship range, and the most expensive cards you can get nowadays um, that are in any way worth paying for an upgrade are the 1080 Ti's. You can get Titans, which are more powerful, however, um, Titans are. Um, like really expensive <laughs> uh, so you would get like one extra VRAM for 400 pounds more it's it's just not worth it we're gonna put the gigabyte Aorus graphics card in we need to take this off first yeah it just locks in the uh, little base and we won't need to take out this one uh, and the top one I guess to actually tell from this and then we can install it uh, no that's wrong it was the bottom one <laughs> there we go uh, that'll generally take up like two bays on there and uh, yeah it looks a little bit fancier than my graphics card I've got the OC um, 
uh, let me see what it's actually called. Let me look it up. Uh, gigabyte. 1080. I think it's called the Black OC. Uh, yeah, it's going for £900 right now. I did not pay £900. It's still expensive. Um, I think it's got a slightly slower core clock than, uh, than this, but obviously the same amount of VRAM. I think this one at the minute, this, this the Gigabyte Aurus. Let's have a look. Um, 1080 Ti Aurus. The actual difference between uh, manufacturers is fairly neg negligible. Um, so this one's actually weirdly a little bit cheaper <laughs> currently uh, on overclockers anyway where I look. Uh, the Extreme Edition is about the same price as my card. So it kind of, they, they vary in price a little bit um, with how they work but um, oh, let's get rid of that. Just 
for a pre-built system like this it'd be at least 2300 something like that pre-built so you can see you can save yourself money by like building like this uh, for windows it costs you about another uh, uh, light effect rainbow apply <laughs> sweet look at that that's cool that's very cool. I even got it on the on the PC itself. That's very cool. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. That's nice. Uh, anyway, let's run 3D Mark. Let's see what kind of score we get on it. It's nice. It's very nice. Um, just after we do this, I'll just change a couple of bits that I would like to kind of have have in there. Um, kind of like future reference then we'll, we'll run the PC mark again I guess and um, see what we can get it's nice though I think <laughs> like the like the rainbow effect it's a bit I don't think I'd necessarily have that like that like you can actually get like uh, LED programs now which run and base upon your like how your your in game I saw one for like Far Cry 5 so like when you're on fire it's like flashing orange and when you're like in the water it's like blue and stuff like that and it changes as you kind of go around and there are ones which what the hell what the hell is going on here hey get me back in the bloody game that's annoying blizzard I blame you blizzard um it yeah, has ones which kind of work all like that, and it's hilarious, really. It's it's totally ridiculous, but you've got to love it, haven't you? I mean, who doesn't love it when their fans flash like that? <laughs> oh dear. 
it's it is adult Lego like it absolutely is what's this one we've got here uh, oh it's like a Ryzen build that's interesting it's an S340 again this might be one when I was playing around actually um, let's build one quickly here it's been like a x62 I think that will work I think I have to remove these to, to fit that because um, I'd love to get like an x62 they're so nice looking I, I don't yeah, I just don't think it would be worth it though I think I'd probably drop about 10 degrees and my temperatures at the minute that I'm getting are like 50 to 60 on the CPU and uh, like 60 on the on the GPU and that's fine <laughs> like it's absolutely fine there's, there's no problems with that whatsoever let's go like pretty overkill on this shall we uh, it's got space to your eye yeah it has. it's putting like what's got the highest frequency probably the extreme right yeah okay it's uh i'm intrigued to know like how much more powerful this would be this system would cost you an absolute fortune
this, we need like two power supply cables. <laughs> uh, it's ridiculous. Wait, why are these a weird colour? That's odd. I guess it's just what goes with this. It's a bit odd. Um, is that everything in there, like, cabled up, I guess? system. This system would be like three to four thousand pounds if you just brought it like this. It would be crazy. Um, put the front panel on. Uh, put the, uh, you know what, I don't even need to probably put anything else on. There we go, we'll just power up like that. Sod it. Uh, what do we get here? 7,900. Um, yeah, the CPU is the slightly weak link, but as I said, it doesn't really matter too much because the CPU won't uh, hugely affect your, um, you know, potential problem, your potential, like, uh, ability to, to run games, as it were. So, uh, I forgot what those numbers were, so let's just run it again and leave it like that. And then we'll definitely got to put the lighting in uh, and 3D mark yes there we go okay so that's that it's a boost <laughs> maybe one day that's what my PC could become <laughs> but for now we've got to have this scrub level PC I'm joking my PC is not scrub level at all it is I'm sure uh, like uh, I like it breathing. What colour do we want it breathing? Let's get, try and get it like pink. No. Apply. There we go. It's kind of breathing pink. Although, let's just maybe go, let's just go rainbow, fuck it. We want it probably at a bit slower speed there. And then let's run 3D Mark. Yay. It looks nice, doesn't it? Look at that, so we don't have the green outline. Let's see the scores we get. So, yeah, we got 7906 here. Graphics of 8803 and 5041. Obviously, the higher number, the better um, of my beautiful PC here that I pretty much own. Pretty much. Um, and, uh, yeah, I said I've got a, a 4K monitor. Um, 4K is amazing. It looks so good. Oh, dear. I broke the computer. Did I forget the thermal paste? Oh god. Uh, do you guys know I missed the thermal paste? I got too excited. Uh, no, we gotta remove. Oh crap, I gotta remove this, haven't I? Idiot, fill it. I did forget the thermal paste, didn't I? I'm sure of it. Uh, let's put a different um, CPU calling on. Let's try and let's try the EVGA. Let's 
try and run it this time. I can't, I, did I not put, I don't think I did put thermal paste on it, did I? Let's try and run it this time. So again, 7906. So this, this PC would be like more than double the price of my PC. Like that RAM alone would be like, I don't know, five to seven hundred pounds just for the RAM. The two graphics cards would be uh, nearly two thousand pounds. Uh, oh shit, sorry. <laughs> just press the wrong button. Oh, you idiot. Oh. Is that how you do it? Oh, I think we did choose the white there. I think you have to choose at the beginning, maybe. Okay, it's good to know. So, yeah, okay. Alright, well, anyway. I mean, all the fans are running and everything, so it should be fine. Uh, um, yeah, so that PC would be like £4,000 probably to buy. Mental. Then you need like a big 4K monitor to actually make it justified. The new ones that are coming out, I think that's what I was talking about a while ago. They're just now releasing, or they're going to be coming out within the next couple of weeks. Uh, 4K monitors, like I think they're 27 inch uh, monitors, and um, they're 4K HDR. Um, they go to, I think, 120 hertz. <laughs> I've broken the computer. Uh, is it is it because the case is incomplete is that why okay we can we can put the case back together okay no we don't have the PCI cover we want the PCI lock I thought we could, I mean technically we could run it like that we wouldn't turn it off but maybe the the way this works is a bit a bit fiddlier So I think I maybe did put thermal paste on. Maybe I, I've got redemption. Let's try it again. It's ready to boot. Um, yeah, they're like, they're absolutely crazy. Um, and they're 2,000 pounds. HDR, 4K, 120 hertz. Just phew, mental. I'm trying to see if they've got any on overclockers at the minute. Um, don't think they do I think they do on like New Egg or something like that someone was saying they've got them there it's like pre-order um, and like it's the future my opinion on HDR is that it's not worth it right now um, I don't think there's enough like PC games that use it and I don't think they're using it that well I think it looks quite good when you play your um Oh shit, I keep blue screening. I've done something wrong here and I'm not sure what it is, so we'll leave her that for now. This system broke 3D markets. You're too good. We can all agree on that, right? Um, and what did I do wrong here? I can't even remember. Anyway, put your answers in the comment if you know what I did wrong. <laughs> that just broke this system completely. Uh, but yeah, it's probably, I don't know actually. I don't know. Anyway. Anyway, we've got my system, that worked, and we got a time, a 3D Mark level up. I'm wondering what I actually, I'll post, I'll maybe run 3D Mark or something on my PC, and I'll post what I actually got, and you can see what the, the difference is in the comments, or not in the comment, well, maybe in the comments, who knows. Um, but yeah, till, anyway, I'm going to go now. So <laughs> I've spent far too much time on this video, which I thought was going to be a bit short, but it wasn't, before I start breaking more computers. Um, anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.